Hey guys, it's Dante Ferrigno with Ferrigno Freedom Channel. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy the video I'm making here today. I'm going to be reviewing something by Dr. Barry where he talks about cooking oils because I have recently discovered that a place that I've been eating at now for the past six months has been using seed oils when I order my meat. And I had no idea that they were using seed oils because I had asked them before and they had said, no, they weren't using seed oils. And then when I noticed a can of Vegeline on the counter one day and asked the cook about it, he said, oh no, we just use that to keep the grill where we can get the, the food off easier. And I thought, but that's on my food. And I had been wondering why I've been seeing a return of the rosacea in my face. And ever since I've been off of seed oils, this has been so much less pronounced. But the past couple of months, I've noticed that it's been a little bit brighter. Granted, I also haven't been in the sun as, as much over the past month because I've just been so busy every day. Plus, my mother-in-law lives on the property with us now, so it's kind of hard to get out there and sunbathe, you know? Uh, I don't tend to wear a whole lot when I'm sunbathing, and uh, that hasn't worked out too well. But anyway, I'm just sitting here drinking a little of one of my favorite hot beverages, which is hot water with a little scoop of Relight in it. It's my version of coffee. And I thought we would check out this video by Dr. Barry called Which Cooking Oils Are Safe and Which to Avoid. It's one he made five years ago. I'm hoping this will bring a little bit of attention to a video that he put out some time ago because I find tremendous amounts of help on Dr. Barry's site. And I thought maybe we could watch this one together today and see what we can glean from it because I think seed oils are what have been causing some of my symptoms in my skin and some other symptoms that have come up that we'll talk about at the end of this video. Let's get it up on the screen here and let her go. Hi, it's Dr. Barry. Today I wanna to talk to you about which oils you should cook with and which ones you should avoid. This is very important. Uh, cooking your foods in the wrong oils can lead to substantial inflammation, weight gain, and other bad health outcomes. So if this sounds like something that you'd like to hear about today and more like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. It's right down there and hit the little bell so that you get a notification every time I get a bright idea. Now let's talk about which oils you should cook with and which you should avoid at all costs. Now this is a very muddy water because there's been so many billions of dollars spent advertising for certain oils and then there's been millions of dollars spent trying to uh, demonize other oils in order to try to make the advertised oil seem even better. And so it's really hard to understand if you just watch TV or you read magazines, then you think you know which oils are healthy, but you really do not. So let's talk about this. Now, the most healthy oils that you can cook with and eat are the saturated. Let me start off by one thing is I don't think there are any seed oils that are going to be good for you. And that's the problem that I've been coming into contact with, with because Vegeline is sunflower oil, canola oil and soybean oil, if I'm remembering correctly, all of which I'm sure are going to be on his list of not good oils to use. And I'm interested to see if he says anything about how they affect your skin, maybe. ...fats, natural, organic oils that you can cook with and eat are the saturated fats, natural, organic if possible, grass-fed if possible, saturated fats. And these include butter, lard, coconut oil, and to a certain extent, avocado oil. Hmm. These are full of good saturated fats that are good for your body. They're good for your brain. They will not raise your cholesterol level, despite what you've been told a hundred times. When you actually look at the research, that's not the case at all. The average human body makes 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol every day. And so eating 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 milligrams of cholesterol versus your body making 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol, that seems kind of silly to worry about, even if it did elevate your cholesterol, which yeah. it has been proven not to. So stop worrying about the cholesterol issue. What you're trying to start to worry about is the inflammatory issue, the weight gain issue, uh, and the, the bad health outcomes issues. That's what you need to think about, not, oh, this raised my cholesterol. If you're thinking about that, 
then you're behind. You need to do some more reading, do some more research, watch some more of my videos uh, on the ketogenic diet so that you'll understand you're worrying about the wrong thing because sometimes the best of intentions can lead to bad results if they're based on false information. Now, another class of oils that are pretty good to cook with are the monounsaturated fatty acids, such as extra virgin olive oil, macadamia nut oil, and then also to a certain extent avocado oil. It's kind of a blend. You can cook with these. These are fine. Uh, they have good quality fats that feed your body. They feed your cell membranes. They feed your brain tissue and your nerves. You actually need the fat in saturated fat and in mon mon monounsaturated fatty acids. Another uh, class is polyunsaturated fatty acids. And uh, a good example of this is walnut seed oil. That's also a pretty good oil to cook in. Now, if you didn't hear me mention any oils, then hmm. basically, if you know me, I talk about good to bad, right? And so the very best you can do is to cook your foods with butter, lard, coconut oil, avocado oil. That's the best of the best. A little less bad. Personally, if I have to use any, I will use Irish butter, but I don't even use coconut oil or avocado oil. Uh, I don't even use lard because on lion diet, I stay away from pork as well. And, you know, for some people, that's a bit of a detractor for lion diet because you are eating a lot more beef. I do use beef tallow, however, and I will use that when I'm cooking eggs if I don't have butter. I prefer br butter. The only problem is, is that I get a little congested even when I have butter, which is basically cream that has been separated from the buttermilk but there's still a tiny amount in there and it's enough to cause me to feel like my throat gets real congested and I get even a more raspy voice than I normally have. But um, I avoid all the other oils. Finding out that I've been eating Vegeline for the past six months is a bit of a turnoff <laughs> when you didn't know you were getting it. And I was wondering why this was happening. When he mentioned the inflammation, I realized right away that's exactly what I'm seeing here because it gets all bright red here and bright red here and it hasn't been like that for the past two years. And I kept thinking to myself, what am I doing different? That's why I have such a hard time eating out because I'm extremely sensitive to the oils and even the cooks that I speak to, they don't put one and one together a lot of times about whether or not spraying the grill is the same thing as using it on the food. It is for me because I'm that sensitive to it. And, you know, it's it's a little bothersome sometimes because when you go to a restaurant, they make accommodations for vegans, they make accommodations for ve uh, vegetarians, and they make accommodations for those who need gluten-free. But when you ask for accommodations for carnivore, you very often don't get what you asked for. They may try to do it, but they don't really, it doesn't click in their heads. I know from having worked in a restaurant that a lot of times they don't think of those things because they don't really know what's a problem for you unless you are extremely specific. And even then, they may not be drawing the conclusion that something that they use on the grill is actually affecting you because it can't be used uh, on the grill which makes their job cleaning harder. They're just thinking this is something that we use that keeps us from having to scrape the grill down. But, you know, it's just... It makes it very uncomfortable to go out to order and eat. Uh, order food when you go out to eat because you have to be kind of a pain in the butt. I mentioned this in my very first video that it makes it difficult going out to eat. And that's why I've decided to go back to only eating food that I've prepared for myself. It does make it tougher, but it's what I got to do to be healthy. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep the health that I have found over the past two and a half years doing lion diet. Olive oil, avocado, macadamia. Back up nut. just a little bit. That's the best of the best. Little less best, olive oil, avocado, macadamia nut oil, little less, and then walnut. And then everything else over here, you just want to avoid it. You don't want to use it at all because it's going to lead to chronic inflammation in your body. It's going to lead to weight gain and may even increase your risk of cancer. Now I'm going to tell you about the coconut oil, avocado oil. Sorry about going that. To lead. I also had weight gain over the past six months that I couldn't figure out why. I thought maybe I was eating too much. And I learned one thing. I don't want to be restricting my intake. When you start restricting your intake, you're actually 
change, you're telling your body, uh oh, I need to start storing food. So, I mean, I could actually be causing myself to gain weight just by restricting intake. But I also wanted to be careful, like I had mentioned in a previous video, that maybe it was because the food tastes so doggone good since I've been using that Redmond smoke salt. That's the same company who makes the relight that I use. They make the smoke salt. And oh God, ever since I have found that smoke salt, I can barely make a steak without using it. I still use regular Redmond salt as well, but that Redmond smoke salt is so delicious. I thought maybe I was getting a, uh, a cephalic insulin response or a non-cephalic insulin response where your body actually tells your pancreas to start producing insulin because it detects the taste of sugar in your mouth. Well, Redmond smoke salt doesn't have sugar, but I thought maybe it was close enough, like an artificial sweetener can cause this response to happen where you start producing insulin. So I thought that might be the problem. But darn it all, if it wasn't exactly related to what I found out recently that I've been getting in my food over the past six months. The weight gain and may even increase your risk of cancer. Now I'm going to tell you about the worst possible oil you can eat in the world in just a second, right at the end of this video. But I want you to avoid oils that have names like safflower, cottonseed, soybean. All those oils are not good for you. They raise your inflammatory markers in your bloodstream. They tend to promote weight gain, not weight loss. They tend to uh, promote heart disease, not the opposite. So you want to avoid these. Now the very worst oil of all to cook with. If you have this in your kitchen right now, then I want you to go get it and throw it away right now. Okay. And you, if you've watched my videos, I'm all about saving money. I'm all about uh, doing ketogenic diet on a budget. And if you just I'm going to tell you right up front, I already, in my mind, all the ones he mentioned, except for butter and lard, and I don't think he even mentioned tallow, but anything other than those, you might as well get rid of them if you're as sensitive as I am to this stuff. But I'd love to hear what he says is the worst. I would have figured cottonseed oil would be the worst. That's the same thing Crisco is made of. Because you're poor doesn't mean you can't eat right. And so I usually don't tell people to throw foods away. I say, go ahead and finish them. And then the next time you go to the store, do better. But in this case, you need to go and get this bottle and throw it in the garbage if you have it right now. There's two. There's a liquid <clears throat> and there's a solid. The liquid is canola oil. If you have canola oil in your kitchen, go get it right now and pour it down the drain. And th That's one of the three the ingredients of Vegeline. Go get it right now and pour it down the drain and throw away the bottle. It's that bad for you. If you have Crisco or any of the, the fake oils like that, Crisco or margarine, and you've ever used those to cook with, go in the kitchen right now and throw them in the garbage. They are that bad for you. If you throw away a huge bottle of canola oil or a huge tub of Crisco, you're not wasting money. You're actually saving money in the long term. Okay. So yeah. remember, cook with your saturated fats, cook with your monounsaturated fatty acids, cook with your polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acids and avoid the seed oils and especially the, the GMO seed oils like canola, just avoid them because they're really, really bad for you, okay? Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take one second and share it on your social media. It helps me reach other people like your cousin you or go. your uncle or your aunt or your friend who's got a big bottle of canola oil in the kitchen right now and they're about to go and fry dinner in that. Please help me reach them by sharing this video on your social media. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time. All right, well, Dr. Barry, that's what I'm doing. I am sharing this on my social media. <laughs> I'm sharing this right here on YouTube, just like you recommended, uh, because yours came out five years ago, and I felt like I needed to review this information after what I've recently discovered, because it confirms exactly the symptoms that I've been experiencing, because aside from the inflammation issues, I've been experiencing weight gain. I've even been experiencing moments of anxiety that I haven't had in over two years. You know, when I used to get these moments of anxiety, I would tell my wife, I would say, honey, I don't understand it. I'm totally relaxed in my spirit. I'm totally fine with what's going on. I understand that I'm under a lot of pressure and I understand that I'm having a hard time maybe paying the bills, but I have complete faith that the Lord's going to get me through as long as I'm doing the right things. And even when I'm not always doing the right thing, he is so merciful when we come back and, and just come before him and let him know that, hey, I was off track that he forgives us, just like 1 John 1, 9 says. And I'm so thankful for that. But I would get these physiological attacks 
and I could not explain it. I would I would think to myself, why is my flesh so much stronger than my spirit when I am behind what I believe? That I believe it as much as Neo believed that there was a matrix that he had to get out of in the movie The Matrix. I know for a fact that my spirit is at rest, but my flesh was just tortured. And it would cause my mind to race and to be afraid and to feel like I just want to lay in bed and cover myself up. And I would say, that, that, but that doesn't make any sense. I haven't got time to be doing stuff like that. I need to be up and taking care of my family. That's one of the reasons I wanted to take my health into such important concern uh, that, I, that I decided I was going to do lion diet is that I realize I have to take care of what I have to take care of. I also believe that the Lord has to help me provide for my family as long as I'm honoring him. He says that if you honor him, he will honor you. And my goal is to be able to honor him as a man that provides for his family. If my wife wants to work, that's entirely up to her. But I've asked her to let me be the one who provides for our home. And in the past almost two, just over two years, he has done exactly that in a way that I never thought would be possible. But yet I still am getting those anxiety feelings again for the first time in over two years. And finding out that vegetable oil is at the source of it, just really made me want to be able to come and share this with you guys and let you know if you are having those anxiety moments, if you're having inflammation that shows up in your skin, maybe like mine does, or maybe it shows up as pain in your joints because I'd been having pain in my joints ever since I left uh, UPS. And I thought, why am I starting to get the, I mean, I figured maybe I had just did a little too much work at UPS, but that's been months and months now. And I thought, why am I not getting that urge to get up and exercise like I used to? I guarantee you, and you keep watching my channel and you'll see, but I'm going to get away from eating this food that has this vegetable oil in it. I'm going to be preparing all of my own meals again. And I promise you, you're going to see a difference. You're going to see a difference in the skin because it's exactly what happened before. And you're going to see me make that comeback physically that I have been wondering why it's been so hard for me to get back on track. I haven't been able to really talk about it because I knew something was causing it, but I could not figure out what. But when I saw that the other day, I thought, wow, I have been consuming canola oil, sunflower oil, and soybean oil for the past six months not in high quantities, just in small amounts, maybe three or four times a week, but far more, far more than I had done in the past two years plus that I was doing this diet before I started having that food again. And it makes all the difference in the world. I know there's going to be a lot of haters out there. They're going to say, ah, you're just making this up. I'm telling you, as soon as I realized that I'd been taking that in, it was like all the answers that I needed were there. And that's why I'm coming to you now. I don't want to come and tell you about something that is that that I'm experiencing that might be anecdotal because something else is going on in my life that I'm not aware of. One of the problems I have when I talk to people and they ask me, why is this diet not working for me? Which is very rare. I've had maybe, I can probably count on one hand in all the thousands and thousands of comments I've gone through where people have told me that they are either not losing weight, they're not feeling better, uh, or they were feeling more tired and I didn't have an answer for them. Like a lot of times when it's tired, it's just they're not getting enough electrolytes or salt and it is about all that they need to do is up their salt intake. When I've had those things, the one thing that's in the back of my mind is, and I often find this to be the case too, when I dig, when I do get the chance to dig deeper, is they are having something that they shouldn't be having. They're still using some other uh, chemical sweetener or artificial sweetener to sweeten their foods, or they are using some kind of oil that they shouldn't. Or maybe they're not really trying lion diet and they think they are, but they're having pork and they're having chicken and you're not getting the healing effects from that that I've had, then maybe you need to cut out those things too. Because if you're as sensitive as I am, it could make all the difference in the world. It could make all the difference in the world. And I have no doubt about that. Well, 
that's all I've got to share for this one. I do want you guys to stick around for just a moment. I want to tell you a little bit more about Vintage Tradition. They make a great product that comes from tallow that is great for skin. My wife and I both love our Vintage Tradition, but I wanted to come answer a question that I had about how the tallow balm that I use every day after I shave smells that I wear on my skin. Check it out. Guys, I've talked to you guys about uh, Vintage Tradition before. And this is the skin balm that I've been using for a while now. Earlier today, I shaved and I shaved my face and I forgot to put some of this on. And boy, has it been burning. I'm so, I can't believe I forgot to use it because I use it every time I shave. And people have asked me, what does it smell like? The Mild Manly just has a really light, I don't know, it's got kind of a clean smell to it. I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't have a very strong scent at all, which I actually kind of like because I don't want it to be an overbearing scent of any kind. And then the Outdoor Spice, which is my new favorite, has a real outdoorsy smell to it. That's the only way I know how to describe it. Kind of smells like trees in the distance, but not, not really thick and heavy. And I love how that you don't need very much at all. You just rub that into your hands and I use it for my whole head because you know obviously I shave everything but oh boy does it make the skin feel good and it feels nice and moisturized all day long after that yeah I love my vintage tradition tallow balm you should check some out if you're interested there's a link in the description and I hope you like it as much as I do if we pay extra could we maybe get some grease or fat <laughs>